when businesses run these models as a benchmark, they go, oh, now I realize what we're supporting. We're actually supporting a whole lot more waste than we are of, of our own product going out. Hello, and welcome to Food Waste Matters. And I'm Dr. Joanne Freeman, your host from Honey and Fox. When I was doing a bit of background research for today's episode, I came across a staggering statistic. Globally, it has been estimated that over 1.2 trillion US dollars of food is lost or wasted across the food supply chain annually. And what's even more staggering is that this dollar figure is projected to rise up to 1.5 trillion US dollars by 2030 if no interventions occur. So speaking of interventions, in today's episode of Food Waste Matters, we shine a spotlight on Direct, an innovative online tool designed to help businesses accurately measure and manage their waste streams. Now, Direct was developed through the collaboration of the Enfood Waste Australia Research Cooperation, RMIT University, and a commercial enterprise called Empower. So Direct is a cloud-based platform that not only quantifies food and non-food waste, but it also calculates the true cost of waste within your food supply chain. So let's welcome here today Simon Lockery from RMIT and, and Victor Barcello from Empower as we take a close look at how Direct can help make a significant dent in those overwhelming waste statistics. Hello, so welcome Victor and Simon to Food Waste Matters. So Simon, starting with you, how did this project come about and what was your role in it? Well, this project developed off the back of research that had occurred at RMIT University back last decade, where we co-designed a mass cost flow accounting tool with industry in the Northern Food Group. It was the Plenty Food Group back then which is a series of around 100, 150 companies in the north of Melbourne who do all sorts of stuff from one-person operations through to a Nestle factory. So uh, we were able to get a sense through co-designing with them on what industry may want around measurement of food loss and waste uh, and working out different efficiency measures and you know, the context of the true cost of waste, which is not just the waste cost of the material and the waste management, but also the indirect costs related to labour, energy, uh, rent, and other costs that are apportioned to the material that was wasted. Uh, Victor saw an opportunity with the tool we developed to commercialise that through his company Empower. Uh, so we decided to partner up to pitch that project at the, at the time, Fight Food Waste CRC, uh, and it became one of the first shovel-ready projects to develop what became a cloud-based tool uh, digitised to be business ready and uh, so it could synchronise with other business systems and be easy to use by business and implement by business uh, based on turning that spreadsheet tool into something a lot more usable, user-friendly, uh, manageable and implementable. And so as a result of that research, Direct came about so, Victor, tell us about what is this thing called Direct? Ah, so it's the Dynamic Industry Resource Efficiency Calculation Tool. Uh, so that's how we got the name Direct. Direct is certainly easier. Yeah, Direct certainly is, and it's a legacy name from, from the good guys at RMIT. Um, so essentially, uh, from our side of it, it was really about, as Simon said, taking uh, you know, a spreadsheet and digitising it so it was a cloud-based tool. Um, we were able to utilise our, um, our company's resources and actually turn it into a piece of usable software. And as a part of that, you know, we delivered it on behalf of the CRC with RMIT's uh, hard work and effort in the background. So how does it actually work, though? You know, step us through how a small, say, food manufacturing business can use Direct. Businesses 
generally um, hold buckets of data around their business. Uh, and what Direct does, it taps into any kind of inventory or financial data that relates to food ingredients or inputs to the food process by mass uh, and the costs related to uh, those materials and the indirect costs around the business that help support those material flows. It also utilises uh, data on the revenue generated uh, and also the fates with which the materials end up. Uh, whether it's a product that generates revenue or it may be another um, destination that would be classed a waste destination like landfill, you know, it might be higher end like recycling, it might be higher value like a co-product developed that, that generates some revenue but it might be slightly less than the core product or it might go to animal feed or food rescue which is still reasonably high on the food waste hierarchy as an outcome. Direct utilises those data. It, it uses it to um, generate a set of efficiency measures which show you, you know, what the packaging to product ratio is, the waste packaging to the waste product ratio, uh, the material input to the waste output ratio. But also it puts all of those cost uh, measures together to give you a true cost of waste. Uh, and as I said before, that doesn't just measure how much you've lost in terms of what you've paid for materials and how much you pay Veolia or whoever it is to get your bins and empty them, but it utilises you know, the, the, the labour, the rent, the energy and all the other costs that might support material you, you've bought that doesn't go into a final product. And you know, that can be anywhere from, say, 5% of the material flow all the way up to 40 50 60% if you're only using a much smaller proportion of those materials. And when you're using far less of the materials in your final product, you start to see the true cost of waste really start to balloon out to the point where in businesses run these models as a benchmark, they go, oh, now I realise what we're supporting. We're actually supporting a whole lot more waste than we are of, of our own product going out. That's an opportunity to, to take advantage of and turn back into a profitable high value outcome through products rather than waste flows to a different destinations. So it it sounds really quite complex. How yeah. easy is it for a, a, a small business to use it? It really depends on the data and the systems they use. If they've got some digital systems where they're doing their financial accounting, even small and micro businesses often now use digital inventory management systems like Deer Systems, uh, as an example, that SIN 5 cell. So, you know, if they're using any of those kind of platforms, the data is probably there it's just a matter of working out how to get that data uh, and then utilizing that data in direct at the moment most small businesses would just do it manually so they download data from those systems and then upload it into direct to do their measurement there are options with empower though um, probably more so on the you know the m in sme and the bigger end of town to implement integrations where they've got the resources to actually run projects for integration, uh, where you you probably see the same kind of project being run for say uh, SAP uh, or Workday or any of those kind of platforms that they they're used to integrating with their other systems. This could be another example of how they implement that. That said, even businesses that are using a binder book with receipts <laughs> uh, and you know of of their costs and they're utilizing you know a manual journal or written journal of inventory flows could use direct if they wanted to. Um, they could utilise those data and put it into direct uh, manually and then run these kind of models. It can be complex and it just depends on how complex you want to go. Direct can go quite quite um, detailed and granular if you want and that, that becomes quite a big task. But if you want to use quite big buckets of data, so top-level data, that can my, m often make it a simpler task to make the models. So it's been out there for a while now. Can you can you provide some examples or some good case studies of, of how it's helped businesses? So one one case study we did was for a, a fairly significant organisation that has uh, multiple locations across Australia. Uh, and we undertook this as a consulting project for, for one of a better word, but it was also for us uh, an opportunity to see what happens within larger organisations. 
So somewhat forensically going through that organisation and walking through their production process, we were able to ascertain how they did things and why they did things, um, which is pretty important when you actually apply a tool like Direct. But then ultimately it gets down to data and it gets down to numbers and algorithms. So as a part of this process, the client came to us believing that they were essentially sending us to what they thought was their uh, most efficient plant as such and where they estimated that uh, the, the true cost of waste for them was about $10,000 a week. Um, now, through the analysis that we put together, um, you know, we found that that number was very, very far between, you know, the, the gulf between what they told us it was and what we actually found it out to be was significant. So if we take that $10,000 figure, and again, this is a true cost of waste. It's not just looking at a particular production run. Um, so it's estimated to be about a $520,000 a year. Um, we found $14.7 million worth of waste. Um, and if you extrapolate that across their entire businesses uh, throughout Australia, it would equate to close to three quarters of a billion dollars, assuming that we actually did see their best location. So in that instance there, what we're able to do was actually look at the hotspots. Um, we handed over the report to that client and then we left it up to them to work that out. But you know, if we had had a look at it, we probably would have gone in at a deeper level and started suggesting where the opportunities for improvement are and potentially suggest those. So this is where um, Direct has a fantastic commercial application and it identifies the opportunities for improvement, um, but then it puts the uh, control and the decision-making back into the hands of those companies. So that's probably our most celebrated case study um, everything else that we've done, we've always found losses uh, in organisations. But having said that, it's not about finding errors in the way things are done. It's really about resource efficiency. So the more information you can provide based on the data back to those organisations, the better. You're there to inform them. You're not there to criticise them. You're not there to pass judgment. You're there to offer them a clear view of what is actually taking place in their businesses. So um, it might be me being confused, but some of the some of the businesses that I've been working with, you know, the very small um, mum and dad operations that quite often, are, you know, self um, owner operated or less than five people. So is that and, and direct sounds really complex uh, to me. Is is there a version of direct that can help these small businesses? You know, if you're going to use it the way that we've just described, as as Victor said, yeah, it's it's probably too too big, uh, and it's probably not the right tool. But I think it's the way you use it. If you use it with bigger data, so as in bigger buckets of data, I think those businesses can actually use Direct in a more simplified way. Um, because I mean, Direct's been designed to be flexible, so that you could use it on one production line or a whole supply chain, just depending on what kind of data you put it in. And how you then model those data in in, in the model um, that you create. Direct is as complex as the data you want to put into it, really, and uh, it will it will apply the same methodology. And as long as you're going with your eyes open about the limitations of the data you're using, uh, and you're not going to, <laughs> you know, use use the results in in inappropriately based on those data and how you're putting it in, um, then it could be used by a small um, you know, SMEs, micro businesses to at least get a sense check of their baseline and run some scenarios to compare. Uh, that's the other benefit of direct is you can run scenarios that are alternative to the um, current incumbent system and look at, you know, if you spent you know, some money on a new piece of equipment there, what would the difference in the, in the mass flows and the cost be? What's the difference and how long would that take to pay back? I mean, you, you essentially can do a return on investment um, based on extrapolating the results of direct out. Uh, and that could be very useful for businesses that are small because small businesses are, they're tight usually, Absolutely. you know, in terms of, you know, running tight on margins in the food industry and and really cash is king and they, they have to make the right decision uh, on any kind of big capital expenditure. So that's where it could really benefit those kind of businesses in my view. So where do you see uh, direct uh, going in the next 12 months? Uh, at this point in time, our focus is in within the Australian market and obviously to grow outside of there. Um, we do have plans to, you know, augment the tool so it has 
more levels of functionality, more levels of reporting. Um, you know, we're aware of a lot of ESG requirements that are coming to the fore. The ability to do, um, you know, report on nutrition, environmental impacts, even to use AI, these are all things that we are, you know, we're talking to RMIT about now because we think that's where the market is heading. But at the moment, you know, direct is available. Um, it's commercially there for anybody that wants to come and work with us. Um, we also, by the way, as we mentioned before with the case study, we actually come in and do assessments for organisations if they don't have the human resources to do it themselves. Um, so from we, we do offer a consulting side of it. So. So where is uh, direct going? It's it's probably going to have a lot more functionality, but if we're focused in on the um, the core focus at the moment, it's reporting on you know the dollars that are being lost and the volume that's being generated through the waste. Thanks very much. I'm just going to ask both of you this the same question: If there's one message you'd like to leave uh, with our viewers today in their own fight against food waste. Uh, especially uh, within industry, what would it be? We can't act on what you can't measure. And if you need to measure something, direct's a really good tool to do that. So I'd you know, um, recommend anyone who is really having problems with that uh, to get in contact with Victor and see whether direct's for you to utilise in at least understanding the problem before you act on it. Uh, and the, the other good thing about direct is obviously that ability to compare and once you've measured the baseline you could then do your scenarios for the better the better system so yeah let's start measuring and then acting with good data thanks simon and finally vic to you mine is probably the next step um to what simon's got there and that is don't be scared to find out um you know once you find out you can start acting and you can add, you're actually working out of a position of knowledge and that's what you need in order to fight, um, you know, to combat food waste and loss. So, yeah, I'm only going to uh, add to what Simon said. You know, tool is there. It helps organisations. Pretty easy to use once you learn how to um, actually, you know, once you've got access to it. Um, and there's a lot of information that we can generate that will benefit an organisation. So, yeah, don't be scared to find out. It's the first step of the journey. That's awesome. Look, I'd just like to thank you both for joining us on Food Waste Matters uh, today, and I look forward to seeing where you take direct in the, in the near future. So once again, thank you both for joining us. Thank you. And that's a wrap on today's chat with Simon and Victor about direct. It's been pretty impressive to see how a bit of smart tech can make such a dent in our food waste problem. It just goes to show that with the right tools, we can all get a handle on cutting down the waste and saving some cash along the way. So if you'd like to find out more about Direct and what it could do for you, just go to Empower's website, www.empower.com where you'll find heaps of information about Direct and you can also book a demonstration to see just how the tool works. And for all previous Food Waste Matters podcast episodes, you can go to our Food Waste Matters website at www.foodwastematters.com.au where you'll also be able to subscribe to get notified when new episodes get published. And finally, if you'd like to be a guest on Food Waste Matters uh, to share your story about what you're doing to fight food waste, send us an email at foodwastematters at honeyandfox.com.au. So thanks for joining us today and I'll see you in the next episode.